I know you guys have been waiting a while for this video, and today we're finally gonna do it. The SC Prime Windows command line tutorial. So if you're wondering, I didn't actually do the setup myself. Tim, what's up, my man? What's good, smoke'em? Okay, Tim, so what do you say we jump into it? Let's jump right into it. What you're gonna wanna do is head to the SC Prime docs. The link will be in the description and check the provider requirements first. You can run this on either a Windows or a Linux system. We're going to be running it on a Windows system for this tutorial. But if you guys are interested in a Linux system, we could do that in the future, or you can buy one of the ZA miners. The requirements are pretty simple. Two to four CPU cores, four gigs of RAM, and at least 500 gigabytes of storage. Whether you're using an SSD or HDD is not relevant. Uh, and internet speeds are important, but most of you guys should be fine. Next thing you guys are going to want to do is click on Windows Setup at the left and go to the SC Prime website. For this tutorial, we're going to be using the command line version. So click download for Windows and it should start downloading. The reason we're not using the UI version is because as far as I know, when I set this up for Smokem, uh, the UI version had a couple of bugs and was annoying to set up and the command line version is just more stable. Net prop PC's IP address is static. This is important because if you're using a dynamic IP, Every time your IP changes, you're going to have to reset your SC Prime. So what you need to do is just type CMD and click command prompt. Then type IP config and you should see your IPv4 address and your subnet mask. Now you need to go to your Ethernet properties. So click search for Ethernet and you should see Ethernet settings. And then top right click change adapter options. Then go right click on Ethernet and go properties. Then search for Internet Protocol version 4. On the bottom right, click Properties. Now you're going to want to say use following IP address and take your IP address from your command prompt and paste it in. The last digits you're going to want to change to something like 200. I suggest just use a big number, 200 or 250 should be fine. And your subnet mask, just copy paste it from your command prompt as well. So just copy your default gateway in as well. Now for the DNS, click use the following DNS server addresses. And I'm just going to use the default Google DNS, which is 888888 and 8844. And then click OK and close and it should be set up. Guys, if you've been following my videos for a while, you know that I'm moving to my own apartment soon and I'm going to need to afford a couch. So what you can do to help me with that totally free is scroll down a little bit hit that like button and hit that red subscribe button make it turn gray i'd really appreciate it on with the rest of the video you're ready to start setting up sc prime i'm going to create a new folder on my c drive and name it sc prime i'm going to go into the folder and i'm going to extract all the files from a previous download into the folder now i need to open a new command prompt so i'm going to search for cmd and click on command prompt. I'm going to navigate into the folder I just created. So I'm going to type CD and I'm going to type C because it's on my C drive. Double dot 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 backdash SC prime. I'm going to hit enter and you can see I'm in my SC prime folder now. Now I'm going to type SPD and SC prime is going to start downloading the blockchain. This may take a while, but you just have to be patient and wait. Eventually it will say finished full setup and then you can move on to the next step. Startup finally finished. It took 5,000 seconds, which is an hour and a half. So if you guys think it's broken, it's probably not. You guys just gotta wait. It will finish at some point. What's important is this command prompt always has to be running. So never close this, just keep it running. If your SC prime is down or something, the easiest thing to do, which will probably fix it, is to just restart this again. A side note on the docs is also that you can change your metadata folder. I didn't do this. I don't recommend doing this. The default location should be fine. It's just if you don't have a lot of space on the drive where you're running SC Prime, you might want to change it. Next is set up our wallet. For that, open another command prompt. So write CMD and open a command prompt. Now you have to navigate into your SC Prime folder again. So just like we did before. Write CD P SC Prime and then write SCP wallet init. You can also find all these commands in the docs, but once we write SCP wallet init, we get our recovery phrase right here. You probably want to write it down. I'm just going to take a picture of mine because I'm not actually going to be running SC Prime on this computer. 
to unlock our wallet. So we're gonna write SCP wallet unlock and it's gonna ask for our password. The standard password is the recovery seed. So you guys can just copy and paste the recovery seed and it should be unlocked. And now if you write SPC wallet, we should see that our wallet is encrypted and unlocked and you can see how much what your wallet balance is. All right, another thing I recommend doing is changing your password. So if you write SCP wallet change password, it's gonna ask for our current password, which is our recovery seed. So we're just gonna copy paste it in. And then our new password, I'm just gonna use one, two, three, four, five. And then you change your password. So now to unlock your wallet, you just have to write one, two, three, four, five to unlock it. Could not unlock wallet. Wallet has already been unlocked. All right, the wallet is already unlocked. Useful commands in your wallet are the first one is SC Prime Wallet Address. This will create a new address. With SCP wallet addresses, we can see all our current addresses. So currently this wallet has three addresses. And with the command SPC wallet send SC prime coins, and then you add the amount SCP, and then you add the address, you would send funds from this address into a different address. The last useful command is SCP wallet transactions. And this one will let you see all the transactions on this one which is currently no transaction. If we just write SPC wallet, we see our wallet status and our balance. The thing you guys are gonna have to do with your wallet is obviously get funds in it for collateral. So you would buy SCP on South Exchange and then send it to one of your wallet addresses. And then you can check using SCP wallet when the funds arrive and you will see them in your confirmed balance. I'm not gonna do this for this wallet because I don't plan on running SCP on this computer. Okay, next up, we're going to add the folders where we actually want to store the SC Prime data. So for that, go into the drive where you want to store the data and create a new folder and name it something like data one. If you have a multiple drives or you have one very large drive, like for example, an eight terabyte drive, you want to create multiple smaller folders. So something like four times two terabyte folders. So I'd create four folders, data one, data two, data three, and data four. You also want to have a little bit of free space on your drive. So don't actually allocate all the space to SC Prime. Always leave a little, a little bit of a buffer. So to tell SC Prime to use this data one folder, what we're going to do is we're going to go back into the command prompt and we're going to write SPC host folder add and then the path to the folder. So for me, it's D data one and then the amount of gigs we want to store. I only have like 200 gigabytes of free space on this drive, so I'm going to do 200 gigabytes. This may cause problems because the minimum requirement is 500 gigabytes, but for the tutorial, I can only do 200 right now. So hopefully it works. But anyway, for you guys, you should have more than 500 gigabytes and this shouldn't be a problem. But it says folder added data one, so we're good. And it also created metadata in the folder do the storage provider settings. For this, we're just going to use the recommended settings because that way we also get incentives. So the first one is the max duration. So I'm going to take SPC host config max duration and the recommended is 13 weeks. So I'm going to do 13 weeks. You guys can also see the recommended settings on the provider storage index in the SC prime docs. Then we're going to change our collateral. The collateral is recommended to be the same as your storage price. I'm going to go with three SCP. And I'm also going to set my minimum storage price to three SCP. And then our download and upload. And then our download and upload is recommended at one SCP. You can also set this to zero. And then we're going to change our download and upload per terabyte. So we're just going to copy the command and we're going to change it to one SCP. You can also consider this changing this to zero because usually upload and download is free anyway for your internet and maybe more people will rent your storage that way. You guys just have to test it out and try it, but I'm going to set it to one SCP for this video. Then we're going to change our collateral budget to set our collateral budget and our max collateral. I'm going to set my collateral budget to 2000. This is the recommended amount by SC prime. You do not need 2000 SCP in your wallet in order to set it to 2000. So you can always just set it to 2000. I'm going to set my max collateral to 50 because that is the recommended value. And now all the commands should be set up. 
for the thing we want to set up is duck DNS. What this will do is it will create a static external IP for you. And this will help because otherwise your storage provider will go down every time your dynamic IP changes. Now, most of you will have a dynamic IP. If you have a static IP, you don't need to do this, but we're just going to sign into duck DNS. I'm going to sign in with GitHub. And we're going to create a new subdomain. Now you can call this whatever you want. It doesn't matter for this video. I'm going to call it SCP test. And I'm going to click add domain. SCP test.duckdns is taken. I will use SCP test one, two, three. Add domain. So now I added the domain right here. And now on IP chicken, um, you can check if it's currently using the correct IP address. And it is using my IP address, so we can move on. And we just have to install DuckDNS on our computer. So at the top, I'm going to click on install. And then I'm going to pick Windows GUI. I'm going to choose my domain, which is SCP test 123. And I'm going to download the GUI right here. And I'm going to download the zip. I'm going to save it. And then I'm going to execute the installer. I'm just going to go next, 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 install, next, and it installed. Now I'm going to open it up. Now it's important that this is always running. Now it's important that DuckDNS is always running. So if your computer turns off and you, or you have to restart it for any reason, you're going to have to start DuckDNS up again. We're also going to have to update the settings. So I'm going to open this. I see DuckDNS is running. I'm going to right click and then I'm going to click DuckDNS settings. And right here, you have to add in your settings. Now I already did this, but at the top, you just add your domain, which we picked on DuckDNS which is SCP test one, two, three, and then you have to add your token, which you also see on DuckDNS right here. And once you do that, you click OK, and it says DuckDNS settings is successfully validated and saved. What you guys are gonna have to do is port forward the ports 4282, 4283, and 4285 on TCP. Now, this is gonna be different depending on which router you have, but pretty much you guys are just gonna have to log into your router settings and dig around a bit and you should see a port forward option somewhere. If not, just Google your internet provider. You'll find a tutorial somewhere. Drive so you can viewer because I'm not actually running SCP on my computer, so I don't actually have balance in the wallet. But this is the computer on which Smokem is running SC Prime. So we're going to check if everything is set up correctly. So the first thing we would write is SCP. And we can see we are synced right now. We can also check SCP host. And we will see that we have 16 terabytes of storage and we see all our drives. So you can, can make sure that you added all the right drives. And then you can check your IP config and make sure that the IPv4 address right here is the static IP we changed it to. Also, you can go to can you see me and check the ports. So we can check if all our ports are open. So 4282 is open. is too slow so only 4283 blah 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 4283 is also open and 4285 is also open also make sure you are running duck dns and if all that is running you're ready to start your storage provider thing is set up correctly to launch your storage provider you write scp host announce scp and then the port is 4282. Obviously, the SCP Smokem would be whatever you set your DuckDNS to. So it would be whatever you set your DuckDNS to, dot DuckDNS.org, 4282. And then you hit enter, and it will submit, submit the host announcement to the website. And this might take a couple of minutes, but after, after a couple of minutes, you should see your host on the Grafana website and it will tell you if you have any errors or if it's running correctly. The website to find your host up here where it says announced addresses, you can click the filter and then you can search for whatever you called your duck DNS. So for me, SCP Smokem, here it is and I click OK. And then when I press it, you would see all your stats. 
So if your computer crashes or, or something went wrong and you want to know how to restart your SC Prime, there's two things you would have to do. The first thing would be is to restart the duct DNS and check to see if all the settings are correct. And the next thing you would need to do is open a new command prompt again, navigate into your SC Prime folder, so CD, D, SC Prime and then write SPD again. And it will start up SC Prime again, and you should go back online pretty soon. SC Prime docs, there is also a auto start program. This would automatically start up SC Prime every time you reboot your computer. You would also have to set this up for duct DNS, but if you have that set up, you would just have to reboot your computer and everything would start up automatically. We're not gonna go over that in this tutorial. If you guys are interested, let us know. Okay, so guys, that was it. I hope that this was useful to you. Tim will be lurking in the comments if any of you guys need additional help. Tim, thank you very much for helping us out with this, bro. No problem, Smoko, man. And I'd really appreciate it if you guys went to follow Tim on Twitch and YouTube. We'll have both links in the description below, especially if you found that this video brought you any kind of value. Yo, can I do the like and subscribe? Yeah, sure. Let me do that part, bro. Go for it. Yo guys, if this video was useful, wait, 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 like, wait, 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 restart. One, two. Remember guys, if this video was useful, remember to hit like, it helps smoke them a lot. Also subscribe to the channel, more SC Prime videos coming soon. Yeah, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much it? That's pretty much it. Okay guys, it was Smoke Gum and Tim. We'll catch you guys later. Peace. Yo, you gotta do the peace, bro. <laughs> this is omega cringe, dude. <laughs> I'm turbo cringing right now, bro. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, I'm going to just do a quick segment about sponsorships. Okay, dude.